beautiful. Today I am hiking up to Sassariente. It's um, a pretty steep climb and there's a, an alpine trail at the top. I'm hiking on my own today and this hike scares me a little bit, um, which is exactly why I'm doing it, because yeah, I want to keep doing things that scare me and I really love it when I do. So that is my mission for today and I will take you along with me and film as much of it as I can. So let's go. A bit worrying. It's the Swiss rescue helicopter. So if somebody has got injured on a mountain uh, and needs to be lifted off the mountain, then uh, they come and do that. <laughs> Hope they're not looking for me. The best thing about hiking alone is, well, obviously you get to go at your own pace and um, you don't have to rush if you don't want to rush, but it's mainly, you have no choice but to listen to your breath, to nature, to the thoughts that are in your head. It's buzzing. <laughs> the bees. <laughs> Um, you have no choice but to listen and if you have a very messy head all the time if you have a loud head if you have lots of thoughts constantly going around all the time um, <laughs> which I definitely relate to then eventually after a while of listening and noticing they all go away <laughs> because it sort of forces you to um, be mindful, to be present because you literally just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other and trusting in yourself that you're going to get there and that's a great life lesson <laughs> that we can learn from hiking just put one foot in front of the other and trust that you're going to get there I chose to hike this mountain because just look at it. <laughs> it's so like big and tall and proud. I don't actually think it's the biggest, it's just that mound at the top sticks out above all the others. Um, that's the bit that I'm a bit worried about climbing because it's an alpine climb, which means it's hard difficulty and um, not in the best physical shape. I've just been eating fondue for you know, a couple of weeks now. <laughs> um, but I'm going to give it a try. But by putting ourselves in situations that scare us a little bit, we get more brave, more confident, more um, self-assured of our abilities. And we need to have that to succeed in life. We can't get that by constantly staying in our comfort zones as 
comfortable as they are. Uh, we need a certain level of resilience in this life and I think it doesn't come naturally unless you've been through hardships and at least this is the hardship that you're choosing um, and you are in somewhat in control of. Is there any water in here? Oh shit, I don't have enough water and there is nothing in the tap because they thought it was going to freeze I guess. lifestyles have changed a lot and our environment has changed a lot. We sit down all day, we work in offices, we, we aren't very active, we're afraid of nature. It's the very one place that we belong. And, but yes, but our physiology hasn't actually changed that much. Um, and so we get this mismatch, evolutionary mismatch, they call it where our environment has grown and changed quicker than we have and therefore a lot of our common health problems have come as a result of us not being adapted yet to the environment that we're actually living in. A lot of the factors that contribute to anxiety and depression, in one study they found that seven out of nine of the factors that contribute to anxiety and depression um, are as a result of our lifestyles. So only two of those things are actually biochemical or in the brain. We don't have faulty brains, there isn't something wrong with our brains. There's, we're not living in the way that our body is accustomed to. Our body's in a constant state of stress and shock going what am I doing here? Um, I'm not saying that we need to go back to living in caves <laughs> and uh, hunting and gathering for our food, but we need to be a bit more mindful about our lifestyles and whether they are contributing to our, some of our health problems. I mean, they're definitely contributing to diabetes and heart disease and all of those. When we're doing things that connect us back to our roots, our connect us back to nature, connect us back to our <laughs> where our body sort of feels at home. And that's how I've been feeling the last five weeks or so that I've been here. Is that I'm at home. I'm not you know when I joked about being born in a cave and raised by wolves. There's actually a lot of truth in that. <laughs> Some of us don't cope very well with modern day-to-day -day life, the overloaded schedules, the <clears throat> bureaucracy, the being indoors all the time. Excuse me. Being indoors all the time. Um, just constant overwhelming messages and things to do and when we take ourselves out of those situations and into situations that are a bit more natural to us <clears throat> which we feel aren't natural but they actually are natural um, like exercising outdoors walking in nature um, some people find like fishing or bird watching or anything that connects us to the outside world in turn connects us closer to ourselves and that is a big part of overcoming anxiety and depression. It's reconnecting with ourselves, listening to what our body wants and needs and often our body wants and needs to come home, to have peace, to have a sense of adventure, to roam to be wild, <laughs> to be free.
seen in. Some sort of pipette, maybe, up here. Bird. Stop that. I'm getting a little bit afraid now because it's getting even steeper and I still have a long way to go I think and not much water at all and I'm just generally pretty scared so I'm trying to process that right now and just remind myself that I am capable of taking care of myself um, and I know what I'm doing. I've, I have got, you know, everything I need. I just need the, um, to keep going, really. Keep on trucking. Start the path. I'm nearly there now. Um, I can see civilization, so it's a bit less scary. It's difficult to hike downhill with a stick and hold the bat and hold the camera. So, not getting very much footage. Thank goodness I brought my head torch. I made it to the bus stop. It's a very strange bus stop for a, a Londoner. It's literally in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but I'm really proud of myself. I'll post the stats on the screen. But it challenged me in every way possible. <laughs> and I'm naked. <laughs> but I'm really, really proud of myself. And I'm really proud that I've done it. That might be a bus. Anyway, I did it.